Hi, I'm Shivani, and you're watching The Curly Bookworm. So this is part two of my video on my top 10 reads of 2016. I didn't have enough time to wrap up that day, so I thought I'll do it another way. Um, if you haven't watched the first part, it should appear either here or here. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, uh, but click whatever it says that you should. If for some reason you decide that you don't want to watch the first part, which is just weird, um, don't. But there are some things you should know. A, this is a video that is essentially about my best reads of 2016, and I've had a great reading here. B, they weren't really published in 2016. They're just books that I happen to pick up through recommendations or suggestions or whatever uh, in 2016, and I really love them. C, these are very brief summary videos, so really mini recommendations. And D, I totally forgot to tell you last time, this is not one of those wholesome, like, calm down thing. It's literally a really randomized list of 10 of my best books, except for maybe Americana, because I has to, I feel like, be at the top of my list. It's also probably because I'm crushing slash fangirling on Chimabanda, but yeah. This is the sixth book on the list. It's called My Lady Jane, and it's got three authors, and it's basically Cynthia Hand, Rhody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. It is such an ugly cover. Hmm. I know. So the reason why I say that is because it has nothing to do with the story itself. I mean, I like historical fiction, but it looks like one of those very typical historical fiction books. And I see these little things here that say different things. But, oh God, it is, it's so not. Please, no. Such a classic example of don't judge a book by its cover. But this is book cover part such a good work it's so funny it is so funny it literally starts off being super hilarious like from the first paragraph and i couldn't put it down do you remember henry VIII? the crazy guy who had like six wives and all of them either died or like got divorced or whatever yeah that guy it's his son edward's time in in when the book starts He's like 16 or 17 years old and he's already really sick or maybe he's 19. I don't know. Anyway, the point is that he's he's pretty ill. He knows he's going to die and he needs to pick an heir. Um, at this point, he has two choices, Mary and Elizabeth. And for various reasons that I don't want to get into right now, um, he doesn't pick them. But he instead picks Jane, who is his cousin. Um, and that kind of goes really wrong for Jane Grey. It sounds already like historical fiction, right? It's not, and I'll tell you why. Because while it's based on that, they've changed the whole story. It's hilarious. There is a human that changes into a horse. Uh, don't worry, I'm not giving anything away. There is uh, all kinds of crazy things happening. Um, there's like the tiniest bit of magic in, in the book, but it's not fantasy, don't worry. Um, it's just, it's such a good book. Go and get up. Next book, which is number seven, I believe, on my list, is A Monster Call by Patrick Ness. And it's been um, illustrated by Jim Kay. Look at this cover, man. Look at this cover. It's so gorgeous. I hope you can see it. Oh, that's, that's the monster, in case you're wondering. And, like, I'm going to show you some of the illustrations because it's so good. It's so good. It's just, oh, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't know if you can really see that one. I mean, it's gorgeous. Half of my notes in there are really about how gorgeous this book is. But apart from that, the story is, uh, it's so touching. It's just a gorgeous story. It's about a little boy, 13-year-old boy named Connor who has issues at home, has issues at school, and and he has these terrible nightmares. And then suddenly one day he has like this monster who comes calling for him. And then 
the story just goes on. So this book was doing the rounds on BookTube and a lot of people said that this book made them cry. So just just giving you a heads up that it might. It didn't really make me cry. Of course, it made me feel super sad about the ending. Oh, that's my cat. That's my crazy cat. Okay, um, but this book did definitely touch me. It's a seriously very good looking book. That's my cat. This is Mogu. Hi, hi, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> That's Mogu. Um, she likes to hang out. Book number eight on my list. Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Sample. Sample? Simple? I don't know. I hope I got that name right because I really, really, really like this book. It's about this mom who's totally crazy, who's also an architect. And she's, well, she's not crazy, but she's really, like, oddballish. I, like, I would hang out with Bernadette. I would, she's so cute. She is totally sarcastic. She is totally chuckle-worthy. She has all of these little witty things that she says. Her parenting idea is completely different. And so the book kind of opens on that. And then very soon we realize that Bernadette disappears. Nobody knows where she is. And she has this very special relationship with her daughter. And so her daughter starts looking for her. She starts looking for clues as to where her mom could have gone. Um, and then we find out a whole lot about Bernadette's past and where she's from and like how she used to be this fantastic architect that everybody talked about and so on and so forth. This little guy, this little guy, this little guy. Okay, so that's where you go, Bernadette. Go pick it up. It's it's really funny. It's um, it's a really cool book. Pick it up. Okay, so the next book on my list is this one, The Rosie Project by. I don't know how to pronounce this name. Graeme Sinsin, maybe? Okay. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I love this book. I love that you gave the world Don Tillman. Um, Don Tillman is the protagonist of this book. And he basically is a genetics professor. And what's really cool about Don Tillman is that he, he totally knows. He has his shit in control. He knows his life backwards. He kind of has timings for everything. He knows exactly how much time to devote to work, to socializing. Uh, he knows, you know, how much exercise he needs to do and how much food he needs to eat. He's totally factual about his life. And he is therefore obviously totally factual about finding a life partner. Um, isn't the premise hilarious already? I'm not sure I related to Don Tillman um, as a pr protagonist, but he is so endearing you definitely want to know his story even if you don't know anybody like him it's one of those you know settle in a nook and read books it's one of those get lost in that book books and then wake up and feel like everything is right with the world you know um so go read the book so the next book on my list and I guess it's the last book on my list. Wow, I feel like it's been a really long journey. It's The Devotion of Suspect X by Kaigo Hikashino. Wow. I seem to really suck at pronouncing names these days. But this is an excellent book and it is based in Tokyo, which is in Japan, which I'm totally fangirling over. And who wouldn't because their food is so good. And everything about them is so interesting. So I've been, you know, like dying to visit. So every time I pick up a book that is from that world, from Japan, I get really excited because apart from the story itself, I really get to know what the people are like, what it looks like. Um, and it's true what they say, right? Like travel is in the books, really. Um, so this book is about, it's a thriller. Um, not so much a mystery, but a thriller. Ishigami is this guy who lives next door to a mother and a daughter um, who are fairly regular people who have this really quiet very polite and well-spoken neighbor whose name is Ishigami and one day something bad happens to this woman and her daughter well actually she does something bad and she wants to cover it up and then 
Ishigami walks in and the story is about him and how he helps her. Um, that's that's pretty much all I'm going to say because I don't want to give any more away. I love how his character was developed. There's just so many layers to Ishigami without him being like a complicated person. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. You have to read it. You'll understand what I mean. It, it's a good book. Uh, it leaves you with kind of a hangover when you're done with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was that if any of you know any good, great Japanese fiction novels, please send them my way in the comments. Um, I've read a lot of Murakami, but that's pretty much all I've read. Um, I'd love to read more stories from, you know, Japan. It's my time to say bye bye. So um, share, subscribe, do your thing, like this video. Most importantly, I'd love your comments because I'm, I'm here to also make like friends from the book community who, who can actually have conversations with me about different books and all the stuff that we're all reading. Send me your recommendations, tell me what you think of this video, uh, share this video with people that you also feel like enjoy reading books. Uh, that's about it. That's about it for me today. <laughs> Bye. The one that I love the most has to be this one.